Hey y'all, it's Jess, executive producer on League of Legends. You might have noticed the title of this video is a little bit different than usual. It used to be called Riot Please. We've tried this format out for about four years, and obviously since then we've launched a ton of games. And so what we want to do is still use this format or this venue to be able to talk to you about what's coming up, but also be able to give more dedicated time to each of the games so we can actually give everyone breathing room. Today we're going to be focusing on LOL PC the MOBA and cover three topics. First is going to be the state of the game, second is going to be the client, and third is going to be game clarity. Now I'm going to hand it off to Andre, who's going to talk about State of the Game. Hey folks, my name's Andre, and I'm the Game Director for League of Legends. We're going to be talking today about how the preseason item update went, and the overall state of the game right now. Looking at items first off, we think we've got in place a system that should allow some good increases to choice and diversity for most champions. At the moment though, individual item balance is often overshadowing what could be interesting choices. Items like Sunfire or Gore Drinker have just been universally good choices for the damage or healing they bring. And so one of our first priorities has been chipping items like that down so they're not just dominating in terms of raw stats. On the other side of things, we've then also got some items that just haven't been delivering. So we've been doing work on things like Chemtech Putrefier, you know, which we've been broadening the feasible users there. In addition to that stuff, we're also looking at adding some new non-mythic items to fill in some gaps. A couple of examples of those are an enchanter item we're trying that's meant to be good against dive or anti-carry heavy teams, or a tank item aimed at countering split pushes so that even if you're not a split pushing champion yourself or you know, able to just 1v1 a split pushing trend or whatever, there's still a good item to turn to in those situations. So let's look at mythic items in a bit more detail. One of the things we particularly want to avoid is when champions are hard bound to a particular mythic. We're defining hard binding as when a champion buys that item in 75% or more of their games. Sunfire is a good example of that, with a lot of tanks buying Sunfire in 80% plus of their games. Post nerfs, that's down to about 45%, which we think is a lot healthier. Fighters and assassins are also purchasing a pretty wide range of options in most cases. And marksmen are in a fairly reasonable spot, with all three of the mythics aimed particularly at them. On the other end of things, enchanters and mages, by contrast, we think need some more work on their mythic items, both in terms of the satisfaction from purchasing them and some of the actual choice architecture as well. Let's talk about a hot topic this year now, the amount of burst damage in League. Our goal with the preseason was to not increase the amount of burst damage in the game. Some of our initial tuning and design with items, however, did result in burst going up. As a result, we've gone back and we've removed a bunch of that systemic front-loaded damage, making changes to things like Duskblade, Lichbane, Ludens Echoes, etc. We're still monitoring and talking about burst pretty actively. We think it's probably acceptable, though very much on the high side, but might end up taking a bit more out of the game in the moderate future. And on a related topic to burst damage, we should talk a bit about systemic healing in League. You know, healing that comes from items and runes. We do think healing has an important place in the game. Without sustain, some of the lane trades can end up just being so punishing that you get forced back too easily, and the game snowballs massively. But we don't want it to be invalidating a lot of play and decision making, like it can when overtuned. Some of our item changes ended up introducing more systemic healing than we felt was healthy for the game. And that results in things like Grievous Wounds feeling too mandatory and chip damage just not mattering. As a result, we've gone back and we've hit some of those sources of healing. Things like Moonstone, Ravenous Hunter, Gore Drinker, Ravenous Hydra, etc. For some, straight nerfs. For others, we've wanted to shift some of that power towards durability in other forms. Let's shift gears now and talk about roll strength in LoL and how that's going at the moment. We want to ensure that all the different positions have a meaningful impact on the outcome of the match. Some positions will be more about scaling, or roaming, or vision control, or whatever than others, but every position should be relevant. When we first launched the preseason, though, Marksmen and Enchanters were in too weak a spot, so we've gone and made some changes to give them some more early impact. Junglers, on the other hand, were in too impactful a spot, you know, overly deciding games by themselves, and so we've gone and removed some gold and XP. Finally, let's talk about snowballing rates in League. Whenever we do a major update like a preseason, snowball is one of the things we track particularly carefully. 
From what we've seen, looking at the metrics we track, snowball rates before and after preseason are very similar. So we think we're doing okay there. Having said that, this is also one of the things we'd like to focus on more in the future, get to an even better spot if possible. And so comeback mechanics especially are one of our potential focuses for this year's coming preseason. We particularly want to address cases where you're behind and it just sort of feels a bit hopeless, it's unclear what you should do to get back in the game. Or it's clear, but it's basically just wait for the other team to screw up. So we're exploring ways to give a losing team a plays they can try and make when things aren't going their way. Thank you for watching, folks. Here's Jess again. All right, let's get into the client. The client's obviously been a pretty long-standing pain point. So in the beginning of 2020, the first focus area that was clear to us was actually how much memory it was taking to kind of load each one of these screens. We then basically optimized each one of those screens and was hoping for an improved overall navigation experience. But champ select and end of game screen continued to be pain points for players, and so we took a special look at them. What you should see at the end of the day is a significantly faster client compared to the start of 2020. Now, a bunch of you have kind of mentioned, you know, the social panel is still an issue for you. All those issues that you see with friends not showing up, things like that, we're gonna be addressing that this year. The second thing that we're gonna be looking into is stability. We've seen kind of the crash reports that players have been sharing with us. So we want to take a pretty firm stance and actually do a full burn down on all the crashes. And so we're going to be addressing a lot of those too. Next, I want to touch on game clarity. Game clarity is one of those things that all the teams kind of work on in a more evergreen way for any of the content that they make. But we want to bring up this topic right now because it's been over 10 years and we've pushed a lot of champions and skins to the game. And so what we want to make sure we don't betray is kind of that level of competitive integrity where now characters might be unreadable or hard to understand what they do or how do you play against them. The first input into that framework is the silhouette. It's the foundation for all of our champions and we want to make sure that each and every champion has a distinct silhouette. So for example, take Senna. Senna is one of those champions that her silhouette is kind of defined by her ginormous gun. And so you can kind of understand that that gun is her source of power. And what we can do is kind of stretch all the other elements that kind of surround her abilities, because at the end of the day, the enemy knows that it's all going to be coming from this gun. I'll also give a counter example. Lee Sin is a pretty tough character to actually make skins for, not because he's a complex character by any means, but actually because he has very few distinguishing factors about him. But his animations are what makes him really Lee Sin. And so when we were creating Dragon Mancer Lee Sin, it was actually pretty tough. What ended up happening is, you know, when the skin reached PPE, people were starting to notice that they couldn't really recognize that this was Lee Sin. And that was a little bit hard for them to kind of play with, play against. As we saw that feedback come in, we made adjustments and Dragon Master Leeson is better for it now, but that's the kind of problem that I'm kind of alluding to when we're describing the importance of working around a silhouette of a champion, but also being cognizant of like each of the pieces and how they contribute to the readability of a champion. Next on the list is a new thematic called Space Groove. Space Groove is this kind of wacky, retro-futuristic thematic that we've been really excited to see come to life. It also includes a new champion that will be joining that skin line. And this is the infamous top lane skirmisher that you may have heard of at season start as well. Lastly, we're going to have One For All actually join in the event. And so for all the One For All lovers who have been asking for this, it's your time to shine. The game mode will be up and uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this kind of provides more context on what we're working on and what we're uh, looking to improve. Feel free to give any feedback for all of it and see you on the Rift.